Coach e here for Precision Movement. Thanks for joining me for another session of Mobility Strength Live. What we got going on today is this. Five closed chain exercises for mobility and strength. Closed chain is whenever the hand or the leg is fixed to the ground or fixed to the wall, fixed to a solid object and the body is moving around it. So a push-up is an example of a closed chain exercise because my hands are fixed to the ground and my body is moving. So that's a closed chain upper body exercise. An up, open chain upper body exercise is like a bench press. Same muscle groups for the most part, but now the hands are moving and my body is fixed. So that's an open chain exercise. Leg press, what would that be if I'm doing a leg press for the lower body? Is that like, is that an open chain or a, a closed chain exercise? No prizes. The prize is your own uh, intrinsic positive feelings if you get that. Okay, it's open chain. Conversely, a squat. Okay. Is closed chain. So, we are gonna do this up right now. Dr. B, what's up Dr. B? I'm magically transported from my home office to here. We're gonna do it up. We're gonna get started right now. We're gonna mobilize the hips, the half kneeling hip joint mobilization. And you can see there a couple things in brackets, deep squat one, that's from ROM Coach, the upcoming app. And oh yeah, this, stay tuned, stay with me to the end for a special announcement. If you weren't here on Tuesday, then you won't know what I'm talking about, so you'll wanna stay till the end, okay? So the half kneeling hip mobilization, half kneeling position, like so. You can see that my legs are in line. Now I'm gonna horizontally extend or abduct the foot that's flat on the ground, okay? Opposite hand goes on the ground. So I'm in this, I call this kind of like a tripod position. You're gonna keep the foot flat the whole time. So get that foot flat on the ground. It never leaves from this position, but you're gonna push the knee out. So the foot stays flat, so you're going to have to evert at the ankle while you push the knee out to keep the foot flat. From here, this hand goes on the inside of the knee, and I'm going to push the knee out, but I'm going to resist with the hip muscles. So fire up the adductors. I'm going to hold that for about five seconds. So you're trying to activate those adductors, trying to push the hand in with the knee, but don't let that happen. Gradually relax, hand on the outside of the knee, and then push against the knee, push against the hand, keep the foot flat. Activate the outer hip muscles. Breathe and relax. And we're gonna come up into tall kneeling, bring this foot back in line a little bit, and then do the opposite. You're gonna adduct now. Foot still stays flat. Opposite hand on the knee. We're gonna fire it up and activate. Push into the knee, push into the hand. Hold that strong contraction. Breathe while you're doing it. And gradually relax. Other hand, push on the outside of the knee. Push on the knee, push on the hand. As strong as you can. Fight yourself, you'll feel the core fire up, all these other muscles fire up and gradually relax, okay? So we're gonna switch sides, then I'm gonna give you a quick heads up on why we're doing this and the benefits of it, but just follow along right now. So legs are in line, feet are in line with the hips, go out a little bit, keep the foot flat, make sure the foot's pointing straight ahead, abduct at the hip, keep the foot flat. Tripod position, hand on the inside of the knee, and gradually fire up and push the knee into the hand, push the hand into the knee to get those adductor muscles on and activate it. Hold it strong. We're not just hanging out here, we're activating and relax. Hand on the outside, 
Try to pull it in and resist. Breathe as you're activating. Feel those outer hip muscles fire up. Foot stays flat. And relax. Coming up, bring the foot back in line. Adduct first at the hip. Hand on the inside of the knee. And activate. Squeezing. Breathe as you activate. And gradually relax. Other hand on the outside of the knee. Fire it up. Activate those outer hip muscles now. Abductors, deep hip rotators. Fire those guys up. Foot stays flat and gradually relax. Okay. So that is one cycle on each side of this half, half kneeling hip mobilization. What is this good for? Well, it's good for stability of the hips, especially when the hips are flexed. For example, in the bottom of a squat, we essentially built the muscles to, when you're on the, when you're abducted, we strengthened going out and going in. And then when you're adducted, we strengthen going out, going in. That's essentially what we did and that gives you strength and stability in that deep squat position. So if you wanna get deep in the squat and you wanna be stable down there and strong down there, this technique is a great one to add to warm-ups. Do one set before warm-ups and that's, uh, that's gonna fire up those muscles and keep you more stable down low. It's also gonna help you to get deeper because now your brain knows that you've got strength and you've got stability down there. So do that one set as your warm-up just like we did or if you want to work that, two, three, even four sets. You can work that for two to four weeks and you're going to make improvements twice a week, two to four weeks, ramp up the sets and you're going to make improvements there. Okay, half kneeling, hip mobilization. Next on the list, the tripod reach. So this is a fun technique. It's one I love to do and it's going to improve your shoulder extension mobility tripod reach all right i'm going to show you a couple reps if you haven't seen this one before and i always like to do that actually and i learned this from my daughter's school she goes to a montessori school and the way that they teach skills and when they're young they're working they do a lot of physical things there's no cognitive you know math where you're writing down one plus one and that stuff it's all physical tasks like putting shapes wooden objects into holes like the little blocks those types of things and the way that they always teach is that they say, okay, first you observe, you don't touch, you don't try to do it, you just watch it. And I thought that this was really wise because the brain has these neurons called mirror neurons. And just by watching something, it starts to figure out how to do it. So that's why I like to demonstrate. And often I often say, just watch first. I'm not gonna say anything, I'm gonna shut up. And then let those mirror neurons do their thing. Tripod reach. Okay, so there's a few reps for you. What do we want to focus on? What you really want to focus on here is the arm that is attached to the ground and that shoulder, what the shoulder is doing. So fingers are pointing back that way. This, I don't want this shoulder, you see how it's kind of lazy now? It's just kind of, the shoulder's up in my ear. I want to push myself away from the floor. So I'm retracting and depressing the scapula, so down and back with the scapula on the arm that's on the ground. Retract and depress, and then keep that position of the scapula. Keep pushing away from the floor as I extend the hips, reach up and look at my hand. Okay, this is just for show, essentially. I could do the whole thing without it, but this arm helps to facilitate extension of the spine, which is another benefit of this technique. So, Glutes are strong, driving up high, but really focus on what this arm is doing, making sure the scapula is pulled in. I'm also externally rotating the shoulder a little bit at the top. Looking up at the hand, inhale as you go up. 
you should be joining along now. Inhaling facilitates extension of the spine. Exhaling facilitates flexion. Going slow and under control so I feel what this scapula on the ground is doing and I'm making sure I have control over it. Okay, that is the tripod reach. So a lot of times, like I said, people with this technique, they wanna focus on this arm that's moving, the open chain arm. But the biggest benefit comes from this closed chain arm. Okay, maintaining scapular stability in this extended shoulder position, which will get you more of this range back here. Helpful for doing dips, helpful for posture, keeping the shoulders like this, essentially. If you think a bad posture is like this, this exercise, you're on one arm, but you're basically doing this, all right? That's another thing with the closed chain stuff, closed chain exercises, which is the focus today. All five exercises are closed chain. They work a lot of different muscle groups as opposed to an open chain, like this is an open chain bicep, elbow flexion, okay? If I'm gonna do an open chain or a closed chain elbow flexion, what does that become? Essentially, it becomes a chin up. And that works a lot more muscle groups, lats, abdominals to stabilize. Lots of different stuff is going on versus just an open chain elbow flexion. Yeah, that's not the greatest example, but you get what I mean. What are we doing now? adductor side bridge. So one of my favorite techniques, one that if you can't get it now, if you keep working on it, you will get it. Just like Dr. B mentioned last Tuesday's session. This is one that I, I showed her a, a while ago and she couldn't do it. She said she had so much trouble with it, but now she can do it. And uh, actually I remember from that session Tuesday night, coined a new term, practice makes progress not perfect. Practice makes progress. Got to get those mirror neurons fired up again, okay? Here we go. Okay, that's the technique. Now, that's the movement pattern, if you know my acronym, MAP, M slash uh, AP, movement and or activation pattern. The activation pattern. First, the setup. The foot is in line with the knee, in line with the hip, in line with this hand. So if these, this was hardwood floor, I would be on one plank. I would be all in line there in the frontal plane. At the ankle, you want to invert. So turn the foot down towards the floor. That's inversion of the ankle down here. And I want us, the first activation is to drive the foot into the ground. So if you can't do that, what you can do is kind of lean over a little bit and that'll make it easier to adduct on the floor and kind of push into it. But ideally, what you're working towards is up tall. So adduct, fire up these muscles and then just lift the hip off the ground. So I'm hovering now, not on the ground. From here, think of shortening the adductors, coming into this position like a side bridge position, hold for five, keep driving the foot into the ground, keep breathing, maintain alignment, and lower slowly, moving that hip towards the floor, towards the hand, keeping the glute on, keeping the knee straight. There's a lot there, so we're gonna do it again. Invert, adduct, fire up these muscles, knee stays straight, lift the hip off the ground, push into the floor, shorten the adductor, Hold there, keep the adductor on, breathe. Shoulder blades down and back. And then lengthen the adductor, knees straight, glutes on. Slowly lower yourself to the ground. We're gonna do one more rep. Ready, set, go. Holding for about five. Maintaining activation of the adductor and then lengthen that guy to the ground, okay. It's not easy, it is not an easy technique 
to keep that adductor on the whole time, to keep the knee straight, the glute on the whole time. But those are things that are available to you after sessions, repetitions, after weeks of you putting in effort. Let's go again. Invert, knee straight, fire up the adductor, lift the hip off the ground, and then shorten the adductor. So it's a closed chain dynamic adductor exercise, which is amazing because we don't have a lot of these. And then lengthen the adductor, eccentric contraction, hip towards the wrist, and then try to hold it at the bottom, and then lightly place yourself on the ground. Again, fire up. Breathing the whole time, not holding your breath. Glutes on, knees straight. Lengthen. And one more. If you want adductor length and strength, this is a ticket. Okay. That is the adductor side bridge. Rotational wall press. Here we go. So this is another closed chain technique that it really incorporates the rotator cuff. So there are not a lot of closed chain techniques that really get the rotator cuff, the external rotator specifically working, but this one does. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like and then we'll do a few reps together. What I want you to notice as you're watching is the pace. And just thinking of this, I'm gonna bring you over to a slightly different angle. So you see that pace there? What I wanted to, to highlight was the rotation of the torso that's happening under control. Yeah, this works. There we go. Okay, so what am I doing? Starting hands up, feet are about a hip width apart or shoulder width apart. Knees slightly bent, and I'm about an arm's length away from the wall, approximately. Rotate with the torso. Obliques are really fired up. Make sure you're staying tall. Reach for the wall, and then you press. So this is where those rotator cuff muscles have to really come into play to stabilize the humerus in the socket. Rotate under control, so it's obliques, reach, Press, controlled, scapula, you want to pack it down and back. And then don't just flop back with the elastic energy, but come back under control. Active obliques. Okay, let's do a few reps here. Just gonna move over. My elbow, I'm trying to tuck it under my body that way, as opposed to letting it flare out too much. Here, and then active obliques. So if you think of this, this is almost like a push-up, like you're doing a push-up like this, okay? In the frontal plane. It's not often that we work in this frontal plane like this. So it's gonna help with our mobility and help with our strength and stability at this end range. Do a few more. Rotate, knees are slightly bent, hand on the wall, lower under control, press out, hand is off the wall, and then coming back under control. Hip rotators, you fire it up a little bit as well. Just like every closed chain technique, there's a lot more muscle working than just the, the joints that are moving. A lot of stabilizing happening, a lot of co-contractions, contract releases happening. That's why I, I tend to program them later on in a, in a program. So all my control series, they're all three phase programs. You won't find closed chain techniques in phase one. You'll find a couple in phase two, and then phase three will be heavy on closed chain techniques. That there is the rotational wall press. Speaking of sprint start lunge, here it's coming. 
so this one is wonderful for working the whole lower limb, every muscle group pretty much, from your glutes, your hip flexors, your quads, your hamstrings, tip anterior, tip posterior, calves, intrinsic foot muscles, the bottom of the feet, they're all working here. So let's do it. Sprinters, out of the blocks, basically like this. This is like a typical sprint start. Okay, that's why, that's how I got this name. So let me show you a rep, and then we're gonna do it together. Show you one more. See if you can catch the little details here. Okay, what's happening? I'm gonna turn this way. So I'm gonna show you, start on one side, whatever side you wanna start on, and we'll switch it up after. So get in the sprint start position, which is basically 90-90. 90 at the knees, 90 at the hip here. This one is 90 degrees, you know, like a box. You draw down there, and then you lean forward, fingertips on the ground in front. Yeah. And then fire everything up, make sure you're on, hands are off the ground. So hang out here for a second, feel what's on, try and maintain this range. And then if you can, you lift the back foot as early as possible, and then you start to come up. Feeling the contraction the whole time, not bringing yourself up with momentum, but with active muscular contraction. So down, sprint start, let that knee come forward. Work this dorsiflexion. Back knees off the ground, weights on the front, hands are off the ground, and then try to get the toe off. Ah. My right side is a little worse than my left. Can't quite get the toe off. Let's do two more. Foot's flat, even weight distribution, knees in front, working the dorsiflexion, fingertips on the ground, pop that knee off the ground, the back knee. Hands off the ground, load up on the front foot here. Lift that foot off the ground as early as possible. You might need to start to come up before getting the foot off the ground, that's fine. Progress with this one. The more you do it, the stronger you'll get at the deeper ranges. Last rep. Foot's flat, fingertips down, knees up. Activate. Fingertips off, fire up. Okay, so you should feel everything working front and back all the way down. Let's go to the other side. Let me show you this front view, just for a change of perspective. I know you've seen Bolt, but I can go, I can get moving pretty good. Okay, fingertips, foot's flat. Ankles dorsiflex, make sure the foot is flat though. Back knee off the ground, fingertips off the ground, and then try to load up that front foot completely and coming up. If you feel that, I could try lower limb. Okay, sprint start lunge. Awesome exercise and it's hard. So you might not want to do it, but if you do it, it's really good for you. Foot's flat, back knee up, fingertips. Don't rush it from the bottom, that transition. Stay down there. Hang out in that end range, deep in that end range, and then come up. So we're focusing on the concentric here. Fingertips off the ground. Lift that foot and come up whoa, under control. Okay, last one. Man, it's way too hot to be working this hard. That's the sprint start lunge right there. All these exercises, I put them in the description down below. So you see the names and you'll see the, I think we put the timestamps and that thing so you can navigate your way here pretty easily. So that is today's session. Hope you learned something. 
Hope you worked pretty hard along with me. I'm feeling fired up. Uh, now I gotta do some video videos for the for the business here. But uh, what do I want to show you there? Stay tuned with, for that special announcement. Rom Coach, the mobile app I've been talking about, what seems to me like forever, is available on the Apple's App Store, the Google Play Store. Please go. I'm not even gonna ask you, please. Go download that thing, it's good. Download it, use it, put it to work. This is you know, a lot of time, energy, and money into, and uh, I think it came up pretty well for a version one. And this is something that we're gonna continually build for the foreseeable future, forever, hopefully. I, honestly, I want this thing to, to last beyond my lifetime because when I first met Dr. B, Dr. Aaron Boynton, for those of you who don't know, you know we're, we're partners, we're working together. Now, she said something that I've never forgotten it since, and it's, you know, how can we make movement, moving your body for movement longevity and movement health as commonplace as brushing your teeth? And I never, I never lost that. That's always been in my mind. Not even the back of my mind. That's always been. And Rom Coach, I think, is, is how, is my attempt, at least. And it's going to be our attempt, because Dr. B is going to be contributing to it as well. Uh, so download it, please. Check it out. And I would love your feedback, because it's new. There's going to be bugs. But I would like your feedback to, and I would like you to help build it with me. Um, one feature that we've got set up is the features features board, feature ideas. So if you have any great ideas you think is awesome, you can post it on the features board and you'll see, uh, I'll be posting links to it at some point, um, but you can find it if you navigate through the, the app, you'll be able to find it somewhere in the, in the FAQ or something like that, okay? So that is the session, that's the special announcement. All right, thanks again. I will talk to you all soon, peace.